Hi, forgive the 3D printer noise in the background, but this is a quick tutorial just for myself, really. I hope maybe somebody will find this interesting or useful. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm going, I'm, I'm walking from Onshape uh, through Adobe Illustrator to the Epilog laser cutter to make a part. All right. And so what I have here is a, is a quick prototype that didn't actually work out. Um, this part worked out okay. I wanted to hold the, the, um, SRO for Sonic Ranger. Okay. And I thought that the, that the wood stock we had was quarter inch and it might be quarter inch, but it's actually 0 0.20 inches. Um, uh, the width of it, the thickness is 0 0.20 instead of 0.25. So these holes here are too, are too fat. So I'm going to remake that and I'm going to remake it with the, with the holes here for this high tech spline, uh, or horn rather. Um, so that it can mount and then we can attach this to a to a servo and drive around and look for things. All right, so that's the idea. Um, so what we want to do first is we want to go into um, into our um, on shape. And so this is the project we uh, this is the, the product we've designed. I've designed here on on shape. And so uh, this little part here just um, we're not going to laser cut this. We're just going to cut the the front plate and the bottom plate. Okay, and again, the back plate, rather, the back plate's fine. It's the bottom plate that needs some adjusting. So um, the first step, okay, and first step is to go into, well, I don't know if this is required, but this is this is what works, and so this is what I'm going to live with for now. Um, come up here to on shape, click on the little hamburger, and go to workspace, and we want to convert this to inches, okay, because the epilogue printer is going gonna, is gonna to work in inches. Um, we can convert things to millimeters, but I think this is easiest. So I'm just going to convert all, everything to inches, and now all my dimensions will be given in inches instead of mil, mil, uh, millimeters. All right, so now we, we click on the face that we want to export, and we want to export that as a DXF, not a DWG, and we want to uncheck here, export splines. Make sure that's unchecked. It, I think it's our automatically unchecked. And so here, here's our downloads. So we press export. It's going to download the bottom plate. You can see here there's lots of trials. I've already done these before. So we're going to uh, show this in the folder. And that pops up on my other window, sorry. So there it is in the downloads. And I want to move this over to my uh, my permanent you know, working directory. So I'm just going to move it over here. I'm, I am going to replace the the file. that Now I have a new one that, that, that I can get rid of that old one that did not work. All right. So now we're done with on shape, and now we have to um, open up our AI, our Adobe Illustrator. I'll tell you right now, I'm not a fan of Adobe Illustrator. I know it's very powerful. I guess I'm just not very good at it. Well, I know I'm not very good at it. I guess I'll never be very good at it. Um, it's just not intuitive to me. Okay, so uh, hence the video. So we create new. All right, we want to make sure several things. We're going to make sure that we are in inches, okay? Now the, the width of of my um, the epilogue printer is 24 by 12, and this kind of confuses me because I'm not you know what if I don't have a piece of wood that's 24 by 12? I still think this is a good idea. Um, when you when you build your your Illustrator face, um, I think it's good just to have 24 by 12 inches, and then you can kind of see if if the part seems to fit you know seems to be the size that you're going to want it to be. Okay, so uh, uh, that, this just matches my dimensions of the epilogue. Inches, um, orientation, and we want to change the R we want to change the color mode from CMYK to RGB color. That's important. Okay. Um, I think that's it. Uh, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna title this um, epilogue oh, oh, SPS St. Paul School. Well, let's see if that doesn't work for us in the future. Okay, we'll see. Okay. All right, and so this is 24 by 12. And how do we know that? Well, we can go to View and Rulers and then Show Rulers or just press Command-R or Control-R. And so if we look up here, 0 to 24 and 0 to 12. That looks great. Okay. Um, now, even though we've, we've set it to inches, Look over here. The document is in is in picas, picas. So we want to change that to inches. You know, uh, uh, Illustrator just 
absolutely kills me. I don't understand it at all. Okay, the next thing we have to change. Oh, and this came from this really helpful video here. Okay, from William Derry. Uh, basically, a lot of this stuff is coming from his video. Uh, you can see it here, uh, SolidWorks to DX Accept to Illustrator. Um, this was a really helpful thing, and he shows you some cute little tricks if you if if uh, the tolerances are really important. Um, so highly recommend that that video there. All right. So um, for example, he he pointed out that you have to go into Edit Preferences Units. Okay, and all of these were set to to picas or picas. I don't know how you say that, uh, but anyway, you want them to be inches, inches, inches. Okay. Once you do it once. Uh, Apparently it stays that way, but that is really important. Okay, um, you would think that it would automatically do it for you, but no. Okay, so you press OK, and now we are going to uh, place, not open, but we're going to place our uh, part that we want to print. Okay, so here's our back plate, our bottom plate rather. Um, okay, so. When you, if you just do this, it won't work. You have to show the import options. Okay, make sure you show import options. All right. Um, if maybe if you do it uh, once, it's done. But the first time, you have to show import options and make sure that it's the original size. Make sure the scale is one to one. Make sure you're in inches. None of this was correct when I first did it. So um, make sure you you click on that. Um, and all of this is just the just the default. So press OK, and now here's our back plate. Okay, there it is, and I'm going to move it up to the very top corner. Okay, and then wherever your laser uh, pointer is, that's where it's going to, you know, that probably that top left corner is where it's going to be. So notice I haven't, I've given it no, um, no little extra border or bleed. Maybe that's too close. It looks like it's over, over the edge. Yeah, it's over the edge. So I'm going to move it back down. Okay, good enough. For, I'll give it just a tiniest bit of little space there. Okay, good enough for government work. All right, and, and then at this point, now it's really good to look again at your ruler. Okay, my biggest problem, one of my biggest problems with, with Illustrator was that it would put it on and it would redimension the size in all kinds of weird ways. So I'm just going to double check that that looks about right. So you you know know what you're doing before you before you start. Okay. Um, um, again, uh, watching this video here, um, SolidWorks to DFX to Illustrator will show you how, for example, you can group different things and you can change the tolerances with the offsets. I'm just going to cut it just as is. All right, so what you have to do over here is we're going to highlight uh, highlight everything. Let's see here, draw a box around it or command or control A. Notice everything has been highlighted, including the inside stuff. We're going to change our stroke. This is the, the width of the line. Okay, we're going to change our stroke to 0 0.001, one thousandth of an inch. Okay, um, we're going to also make sure that our color is black okay it's important for the color to be black if it's not black it will think it's something else and we'll try to do something else on your laser cutter all right at that point if you zoom out again you'll see it's pretty it's pretty um uh thin right and you think that's that's too thin well that's what the epilogue laser reads as um as a, as a cut as a as a vector so we, we want all of these things cut out so that's what that's the lines thickness for the for a vector cut all right at this point we are going to go to file and we are going to print it oh well, maybe i'll actually save it and i'll do bottom plate and just write over my old one and now i'm ready to print file and print so this is how the epilogue works, which is also confusing to me. Um, I don't know if this matters, but I'm going to put it, click up there in the top left hand corner. Oh yeah, it does matter, I think. Uh, I'm just going to put it up there so it prints in the top left hand corner. I'm not going to scale. Um, I'm choosing my epilogue printer and then you have to go to setup. Make sure the printer is selected, go to preferences. All right, so we're only doing vector cuts, but I think 
if I remember correctly, it, it should just be vector, but I think it didn't work last time, so I'm just going to leave it as combined, which thinks that you're doing raster, which is kind of like uh, etching, as well as vector, which is cutting. Okay, so I know my speed for this cut, because well, for this piece of plywood needs to be 30. My speed, uh, sorry, uh, my power needs to be 100. And um, the other teacher in the lab and I uh, have a bit of a difference in opinion here. He uses the default here, and I'm using 500. And I think that gives you kind of a better cut. This is what Epilogue recommends. Um, and then I want to change it to inside out. I want to cut the little holes first and then cut the outside. Last time it didn't work, so I don't know. If I'm, I'm not connected to my laser, but even if I were, I would not send it to the laser. I'm going to send it to the Epilogue print manager. Right? So I'm just, oh gosh, forgot about this. The piece size needs to be a horizontal width of 24 by 12. Okay, which again, is is uh, something you know we did the exact same thing in AI so now everything is 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 copacetic it's it's matches it's the same I think all that looks good so I'm going to press OK and then I'm going to press print and then I'm going to press print and it's going to say it can't print the illustration but in fact if we look at our epilogue manager and go to jobs it did okay. Uh, it's 439, and it just printed that. So when I get to the lab and I have the printer in front of me, I can, or the laser in front of me, I can now, I can now do this. I just do a, a quick check: speed 30, power 100, frequency 500. I can, um, let's see here. If I double click this, I can get a print preview, which is important. Okay, that looks really good. And so now all we have to do is connect this computer to the epilogue printer, press quick print, and it will do it. Okay, I, I should have mentioned that if we wanted, you know, this is still a test part, so I don't know, um, I don't know if, um, if this is going to work or not. Gosh, this is so unintuitive. I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm so used to zooming in another, in another way. Okay, you get the point that if you, um, uh, if you wanted a whole bunch of these, we can copy and paste and paste and paste and paste and paste, and then we would print all of them up at once. But this, since this is still a prototype, it's just going to be one. Okay, I think that will work, and I'm going to pause the video and go to the lab and see if, in fact, it does. All right, thanks.